The Egyptian pyramids at Giza are undoubtedly one of the most, if not the weirdest structures on Earth. They have stood at the test of time and nature for thousands of years and are still standing strong. And as you might have guessed, many mighty people have been obsessed with unraveling the mysteries behind these monumental structures for centuries. Notable among them is Nikola Tesla, one of the greatest modern inventors to ever live. Nikola Tesla revealed terrifying truths about the pyramids. Although Nikola Tesla died unappreciated, his fame has recently been brought to the limelight. In fact, his key ideas led to the invention of smartphones, Wi-Fi, AC electrical supply systems, and some of the technologies we use today. Apart from his crazy ideas that were patented, Tesla expressed interest in several other mysterious top-secret projects, including the Egyptian pyramids. His drive to unlock the secrets of the pyramids began when he was 20 years old. It was at this point in his life that he decided to make it his life's goal. Made of about 2.5 million blocks of stone and weighing nearly 6 million tons, the Egyptian pyramids are mysterious and made in magnificent structures. Structures that have drawn several visitors from across the globe. If you have ever seen or read about these pyramids, you'd agree with us that they are full of secrets that have not been exposed. And some of these secrets are the sources of Nikola Tesla's groundbreaking ideas and inventions, especially the notion of the ability of pyramids to generate power. Many people believed that the pyramids were actually tombs for the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. However, it was surprising that not a single mummy has been found in any of them. All the mummies are lying in the Valley of the Kings. Besides, there are no indigenous Egyptian inscriptions or art on the pyramids. Unbelievable, right? Or who could have spent so many resources to build such gigantic structures with no goal in mind? After all, we've now confirmed that they aren't tombs for the Egyptian pharaohs. Neither are they some edifices that have been built in honor of some gods. Nikola Tesla read several books about ancient structures and found that the pyramids contained an incredible amount of energy. At that time, electricity was barely known, and Tesla began to consider the probability of the pyramids having some advanced technology lurking within them. He became convinced that the pyramids derived their power from electromagnetism. To him, the pyramids might have been built with some form of crystal energy, and the chambers within them were used to tamper with the electromagnetic fields. He also holds the theory that the materials, such as stones used in constructing the Great Pyramid, had energy-storing properties derived from the sun and the moon. Therefore, he suggested that the pyramid could have been designed to generate an energy field capable of providing electricity to cities. In 1905, Tesla submitted a patent in the US titled The Art of Transmitting Electrical Energy Through the Natural Medium. The patent outlines designs for a series of worldwide generators that tap the ionosphere to sap electrical energy. He considered planet Earth a gigantic electrical generator of unlimited energy, spinning around two magnetic poles. He would later refer to his triangular design as Tesla's Electromagnetic Pyramid. Furthermore, he believed that the location of the pyramids, rather than their shapes, is the source of their energy. So he decided to build a tower facility that would later spark the whole city. This tower is known today as the Tesla Experimental Station, situated at the base of Pikes Peak in Colorado Springs. It is also known as the Wardenclyffe Tower or Tesla Tower on the East Coast. He built the pyramids at these locations following the laws of the location of the pyramids at Giza and in relation to the elliptical orbit of the planet and the equator. The tower's construction was based on his theories about how the Earth could conduct the signals. According to Tesla, the prototype would send and receive data and unlimited energy wirelessly to as far as Paris, France. Unfortunately, Tesla's discovery and the device went into oblivion following his mysterious death in 1943. However, his works succeeded him. Even after his death, scholars and researchers have studied his theories on the power of the pyramids, and his ideas have helped to uncover many of the mysteries surrounding the pyramids. What Tesla was trying to explain to us about the pyramids might sound too vague. Perhaps he wants us to understand the power of something much more ancient than we thought. Let's look at Tesla's idea of numerology for clarity. According to Tesla, the numbers 3, 6, and 9 constitute a great key to the universe and are therefore of great importance for all of us on planet Earth. He said that many models appear naturally in the universe, in our galaxies, in star formation, in evolution, and in almost all natural systems. 
Some believe his obsession with the numbers 3, 6, and 9 influenced his preference for pyramidal shape and certain fundamental mathematical laws. He believed that these figures were the cardinal numbers of a universal math language, and this was why he would not use or do a thing that does not result in the number 3 or a multiple of it. Tesla would drive around any building three times before going in. He stayed in hotels with numbers divisible by three. He lived on the 33rd floor of the New Yorker Hotel in New York City, room number 3327. Mathematically, 3 plus 3 equals 6 and 2 plus 7 equals 9. He slept about three hours each night. He polished his cutlery and dishes with 18 napkins before using them. He made decisions in groups of three people. Whatever calculations he made about things in his environment, he ensured the results were conceivable by three. These results would form the basis of his choices and decisions. So what was Tesla trying to tell us with his obsession with 369? After all, we did not create mathematics. We eventually realized that mathematics is a universal language and the law guiding it is binding on everyone on planet Earth. For instance, in Vortex Mathematics, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 2 equals 4, 4 plus 4 equals 8, 8 plus 8 equals 16, 16 plus 16 equals 32, 32 plus 32 equals 64, 1 plus 6 equals 7, 3 plus 2 equals 5, and 6 plus 4 equals 10. You'd notice that the number patterns only returned 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, and 5. These numbers are repeated 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. Also, 3, 6, and 9 does not follow this pattern. Realizing that these forms are found in nature, the ancient people emulated them in construction. If Nikola Tesla could be so obsessed with these numbers, can we say he was trying to reveal some truths to us using the Great Pyramids as a reference point? Here's the reason. The size of the pyramid is aligned with the compass with an accuracy that can only be derived from modern engineering. The Pyramid of Giza comprised 2.5 million blocks of stone weighing 6 million tons. It stands 481 feet high and its footprint is over 13 acres. Aligning this construction with 1 over 15th of a degree of true north is almost impossible precision. This is because the base of the pyramid is level within three quarters of an inch. The pyramid's sides are over 755 feet long and each side is within two inches of the other. Interestingly, the pyramids don't have four sides. Each side is slightly concave, which you can only see directly above or when the pyramid casts shadow during the equinoxes. Whoever built the pyramids had pretty good knowledge about the size of the earth. If you multiply the pyramid's 481 feet height by 43,200, you will get 3,938,685 miles, which is within 11 miles of the Earth's polar radius. This stands at 99.7% accuracy. And at the same time, if you were to multiply the base perimeter of the Great Pyramid, which is 3,024 feet by 43,200, you'd get 24,734.94 miles, which is the Earth's equatorial circumference. This makes 99.3% accuracy. Though the Great Pyramid is locked into the true cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west, a very slight discrepancy of 3 60ths of a degree error could be observed. Notwithstanding, it could be considered inconsequential, considering the fact that the builders of the structure lived in the Dark Ages. So how is it possible that the ancient builders had an idea of the dimensions of the planet? Mysterious. However, it is common knowledge that ancient people were so obsessed with equinoxes. The equinox is the intersection of the sun's path in the sky with the equator when the length of day and night are equal. The length of the day and night on an equinox is 43,200 seconds. However, most skeptics consider the relationship between the equinox and the size of the Earth as a mere coincidence. But according to engineer Glenn Dash, the Egyptians couldn't have used the pole star or sun's shadow to align the pyramids. He believed they must have used the autumnal equinox to achieve perfect alignment for the structures. Equinox measurements have been previously overlooked as a possible alignment method. This is because it was thought to need more accuracy. But Dash differed on this as he revealed the possibility 
the equinox providing accurate measurements using a gnomon to cast a shadow. To prove this, he experimented by tracking the point of the shadow of the fall at equinox in 2016 to form a smooth curve of points. At the end of the day, he intercepted two of the curve's points with a taut piece of string wrapped around the pole. This created an almost perfect line running east to west. This is known as the Indian Circle Method. He showed that though the measurement was inaccurate, the degree of error was similar to the slight error found in the alignments of the pyramids at Giza. The astronomical latitude 30 is halfway between the equator and the North Pole. The pyramid could be speaking to our universe in this way. In the construction of the Great Pyramid, there was an error, though about just 0.05 degrees in the measurements. Even though the ancient structures adopted triple and hexagonal symmetry, we could see three pyramids that are completely aligned with the constellation Orion. You'd observe that the number 43,200 is relevant here. It is so because it represents the axial precession of the Earth. The number is also a multiple of 72, the number of years that Earth takes to wobble its axis. These numbers 72 and 432 were also present in ancient mythologies and sacred texts. For instance, 72 is the number of languages spoken at the Tower of Babel. It is also the number of names for God in Jewish Kabbalah. Finally, it is the number of temples at Angkor Wat and the number of degrees of longitude between Angkor Wat and the Great Pyramid. 432 hertz is the harmonic frequency believed to be an optimal resonance for music, and 432,000 is the number of syllables in the Hindu Rig Veda. What could all of these mean? Could the ancient Egyptians have possibly used a mathematical language and we are only just realizing it? Besides these, the fact that the builders were able to measure the Great Pyramid such that its measurement tallied with the dimensions of our planet when multiplied by 43,200 cannot believe one in great awe. It couldn't have been a mere coincidence. If you take the extended north pole of the Earth and extend it out into the heavens, you'll discover that it points to a star known as Polaris. That's our pole star. But in the future, the pole might point to other stars. The explanation for this is the processional wobble on the axis of the Earth, and the extended North Pole doesn't always point at the same place over a cycle of 25,920 years. But where is the evidence that the pyramid might be a structure for creating and harnessing energy? The pyramid is constructed with limestone and other materials that were possibly moved from a far distance. Each of the stones is so tightly compacted that it's impossible to find any space between them. The casing stones were cut and shipped from a Tura quarry about 500 miles away. The exterior of the Great Pyramid of Giza was made of materials that insulate electricity, specifically the white tufa limestone. This is because it doesn't contain magnesium. The interior and chambers were made of material that conducts electricity making it possible to control the release of energy from inside the pyramid fully. In addition, the blocks used in the inner parts of the pyramid were made from another form of limestone stones containing small amounts of crystals and metals. These two properties, crystals and metals, allow for the transmission of maximum power. It is worth noting that Tesla's tower works on the same principle as the pyramids. But let's now go a bit into the basics. There are a few elements that allow for wireless power to work. They include the sun, water under the tower or pyramids, and the need to put the tower at the right height in the air to allow energy to spread. The top of the pyramids was made of gold, a great electrical conductor. In the middle is granite, which acts as an energy transceiver. A combination of these gives wireless energy. A 2018 study seeks to investigate how the pyramid can focus on energy. A team of scientists used radio waves at different frequencies to determine whether or not the pyramid would respond to electromagnetic waves of a resonant length. They discovered that the pyramid concentrates electromagnetic energy in its internal chambers and under its base. According to scientists, radio waves with a length that ranges from 200 to 600 meters can induce resonances. The closer to 200 meters, the more dramatic the effect. In 2019, Eric Wilson published a paper titled Large-Scale Thermoacoustic Generator. In the paper, he describes how granite and other rock survive vibration. Electrons will migrate through the rock and up to the surface through a combination of science and music. 
The builders of the pyramid created a power-generating machine that has been tuned to the natural harmony of the Earth's vibration, whose source is the tidal energy created by the moon's gravity. This technology is capable of generating unlimited clean energy. But the question is this, what is the source of energy? That brings us back to Tesla. His Wardenclyffe Tower was built on top of an aquifer which discharged the negative ions to the top of the tower. The tower has copper and iron rods extending down into the water. When electricity was sent into the tower, it was to be transmitted to the world through the atmosphere. Receivers were built to receive the energy for usage by people. In short, he wanted to tap the energy from the ionosphere and pump it into the Earth via vibration so the other receivers could read it. The same thing applies to the Great Pyramid. It is also built on an aquifer, an old underground water channel. Recently, copper pipes and iron rods have been discovered there. The capstone is made of gold. The River Nile used to run very near the pyramids to create an electric current underneath them. The electricity then moves to the top of the pyramid through the granite stones inside the pyramids into the gold capstone. This is what is referred to as physioelectricity. Physioelectricity is the electrical energy we can obtain from natural physical movement such as walking and the passing current of a river or underground aquifers. Water would rush into the base chambers and exit, creating a pump that vibrates the pyramids. The vibration would hit the king's chamber with a precise frequency. The king's chamber consists of geomechanical devices that vibrate with the energies of the earth which are then converted into electromagnetic energy. Tesla's wireless power distribution system utilized the Earth's resonance just like the pyramid. Also, the energy generated by the tower would be unlimited and clean. Unfortunately, the tower was destroyed, and there is also evidence that the Great Pyramid was destroyed from the inside. Realizing that he could be on his way to creating a breakthrough in power transmission, Tesla convinced J.P. Morgan, who gave him more than $150,000 to fund the project. Tesla's intention to utilize the design for the wireless transmission of energy was made public in 1898. It would help him to attain great fame and fortune. The project would enable him to transmit worldwide, just like Marconi's radio-based telegraph system transmits messages. He had already established that wireless power would work on a small scale, but he needed more money to complete the project, so he wrote Morgan again asking him for more money. But rather than give him more money, Morgan withdrew from him, citing a breach of the agreement. He went further to empower Tesla's competitors, Edison and Marconi, who were making it big on Tesla's inventions. He also sent out words to the world, notifying them to avoid Tesla. By 1915, Tesla had gone bankrupt and could no longer maintain the Wardenclyffe property. In 1917, the tower was demolished and sold for scrap. This would spell the end of the project. The same thing might be applicable to the Great Pyramid. What if it suffered some catastrophic event that caused it to stop working? Apart from the hydrochloric acid, there are also traces of sulfuric acid in the southern shaft, while zinc chloride and ammonium chloride were discovered in the northern shaft. These chemicals are capable of creating hydrogen even when they are not being mixed. However, if you combine ammonium chloride with sulfuric acid, you will get an explosion. Considering the structure of the pyramid, the explosion was probably controllable. In 2001, scorch marks were discovered in the Grand Gallery in the ceiling above the original location of the resonators. Also, there were cracks in the granite beams on the southeastern ceiling of the King's Chamber. Egyptologists explained that the cracks were a result of an earthquake, but the damage only seemed to have occurred in areas of the pyramid where there was a flow of highly compressed heated hydrogen. Apart from this, the walls of the king's chamber also separated from the floor and appeared to bulge out. This indicates that an explosion might have acted upon them. Similar damage has occurred to the steps of the chamber and other parts of the interior. The southern shaft was discovered to have been coated with salt about an inch thick, a likelihood that hydrogen was boiling and bubbling up the shaft. Initially, it was thought that an earthquake caused the explosion, but engineer Christopher Dunn ruled out the thought and suggested that a cataclysmic event may have occurred in the pyramid, eroding the structure as an active power plant. The theory is yet to be established, though. Ancient Egyptians are known to have been great record keepers. 
However, there doesn't seem to be any record of any cataclysmic event during the time of constructing the pyramid. Dunn believes the event occurred thousands of years earlier. But come to think of it, if Egyptians were known to keep records, there would be documentation of how they used electricity. There are indications that suggest that ancient Egyptians used electricity. Many would point to glyphs that look like light bulbs, but we may be forced to overrule the possibility since there was no evidence that they worked with glass or any components used in making light bulbs. With or without evidence, there is no doubt that the Egyptians actually built the Great Pyramids in 4500 BC. But what if the Egyptians didn't actually build the pyramid, and it was just a dormant structure found by them? This brings us to the Orion Constellation Theory, as proposed by Graham Hancock. According to the theory, the Great Pyramid Complex is almost a match for the stars in the Orion Constellation. So do the Egyptian pyramids actually line up with the stars? On the surface, it may be plausible. This is because the ancient Egyptians tracked the night sky closely to determine when to plant crops and harvest, and we have discussed the obsession of the builders with equinoxes. But because the pyramids were built during a period known as the Old Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, any relationship they had with the night sky would have to match the appearance of the heavens some 4,500 years ago. Also, some clues suggest that the pyramids and the Sphinx have existed for time immemorial. Robert Schock from Boston University believes that Sphinx and Giza are about 13,500 years old. But while Giza has been built in an extremely dry climate since the time of the pharaohs, the Sphinx dates back to a period when the climate had more rain. This is because the latter shows signs of erosion caused by wind, sand, and water. The erosion patterns around the Sphinx base indicate that huge volumes of water are washing over the plateau at violent speeds. This was evident at the end of the last ice age in 9700 BC. Glaciers melted rapidly, and sea levels rose 500 feet within a few centuries. At that time, most humans died and the few that survived took shelter in caves. Now think of the effects that water with such rushing speed and pressure would have on stone constructions like the Sphinx and pyramids. Meanwhile, a sky full of plasma, lightning, and radiation would have caused serious damage to the Great Pyramid if it had used a volatile chemical reaction to create power. We are not saying that the whole event told here really happened. However, we can assume that an advanced civilization existed thousands of years ago. Also, the civilization had the technology to create unlimited clean energy. But the most interesting part of the mystery is how science is beginning to change our perception of the universe. Tesla was right after all. All the major ancient landmarks reveal evidence of electromagnetic energy. They harnessed energy from the ionosphere to create technologies that we could only dream of having. Think of how clean renewable energy will make life safer for humans. Tesla intended to make power free and accessible for everyone, especially to the remotest, least developed parts of the world. If he had succeeded the vast empires of J.P. Morgan that produce most of the technologies we use today would have long gone into extinction. Unfortunately, the clean energy we need now died with Tesla as the world took a different route that poses more danger to us. It was the route of fossil fuels, of coal and oil. But do you think Nikola Tesla is worth all the attention and accolades he is getting today? How would his incredible inventions and ideas have affected the world if they hadn't have died with him? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section.